This is my lead dragon podcast. Split suddenly deciding to get other than next split suddenly deciding to go weird <laughs> and us skipping our intro. Welcome back everybody to the Teachers Lounge. Your favorite forcible podcast as always reaching myself, uh, Jeremy Franklin, and I've been joined by to my left. Which is Brandon because I oh. can't see my screen. I always forget that. You, you always say our names. Brandon Bremont. Sponsored by Cherry Seven Up. Frank Glosser. Hey everybody. And our guest, the void Discord symbol of Charlie Jamuel. Hello. Hi everybody. Trying to make sure that yeah, it looks like it is actually working. So XSplit is decided to work. So before we go ahead and get started, again, a huge thanks to everybody who's watching. And remember, if you want to support what we do on the channel, you can do it in a, a lot. Uh, sounds a little low for me. Okay, I'll try to fix that without it spiking. Um, you can support what we do on the channel by clicking that join button down below. Uh, it gets it's five bucks a month. It gets you access to all kinds of cool emojis and uh, stuff to do during the chat, as well as the little badges, and just goes directly support what we do here. There's also a bunch of different other links for the Patreon and other ways that you can support us. But enough about that. Let's go ahead and just jump right in. So we didn't get to do it last week because several of you guys were traveling slash just busy, uh, and myself, I was just not feeling too great. But we had a GP. The first GP, the day zero GP of uh, this new format. Um, and uh, oh, thanks, Brandon. Thanks for the 99 cent super chat there. Oh, you're, you're welcome. <laughs> it, was a, it was an accident, but you're welcome. <laughs> and, um, and so from that event, a new kind of boogeyman uh, deck concept uh, was created. And so a lot of people have already been talking about it, and that is, uh, again, the Layla Alter combo. But we're going to use that as an example for our big topic as we move into it. But what we want to talk about is this idea of the threat of the format has been identified. That is the strategy people are talking about. How do you actually go about approaching beating that deck in such a way that you don't just get hosed to everything else? Um, Frank, this was kind of your idea for the topic for tonight, so do you kind of want to give us a... Basic concepts. The rundown. Uh, sure. I'm trying to think of a good like counter example because we have plenty of historical ones. Um, oh, um, okay. Uh, one that I can easily think of uh, was this would have been right after the launch of uh, fourth set last cluster, um, and it was sort of accepted that oh, with what had come out, Sherry was still the deck to beat. And this was known, and this was before it like got fully ironed out by everyone clearly to find that, oh yeah, nothing's beating it. Um, so there was a bunch of attempts to like beat it going into the first event for that season, which was uh, Collinsville last year. And so like we saw an example of something we saw is like we saw a, a resurgence of combo decks like the Heroic Knight, where they're like, okay, you can't beat Sherry going along and you can't aggro her out because she has card advantage and she has all of these like just way outsizing your class bodies to throw in as blockers. So they'll try and just really quickly go over the top with the, like, put in and just put in Umer, put in your whole deck and make them have it in one turn or lose. Um, and the problem those decks ran into is that, I mean, A, Sherry was just too good, but also B, like, it was a very glass cannon deck. And so as soon as people at all knew that it was there, everyone hit answers and just crushed it and like not just like oh it stopped beating sherry it stopped beating most anything um and this sort of happens when um this sort of happens like every season you'll see lots of things basically lots of people throwing spaghetti spaghetti against the wall but there are some easy things to look for to like basically avoid some of the most like corner cases where there's just like so little chance of them actually paying you dividends for trying to win that way yeah, I think another example more recently when we had uh, Brunhild was very popular um, in Vegas earlier in the year uh, after set two of this cluster came out and you saw people show up with uh, the Pandas deck which uh, basically couldn't beat anything but was very good against uh, specifically Brunhild and since that was perceived as the best deck in format the Pandas deck ended up doing good because it could eat a bunch of Brunhilds that had no okay cure matchup, etc, etc. You'd beat a lot of random Hanzos that didn't know how to beat it. But then even the team that like put it together, brought it, and managed to perform like multiple a couple of top aids with it immediately dropped it off the face of the earth. Yeah, pretty much. 
Yeah, that showed up once, and then someone tried to play it. I think the following event was Charlotte. I think we had, like, one person playing Tigris, and it just did not do very well yep. because at that point in time, the meta had already kind of shifted, and it was well known, and, and the, the idea of sniping a strategy uh, didn't necessarily pan out. So that is definitely one approach that people can take is this idea of sniping, um, just saying, trying to make that meta call to say, look, I think this is going to be super popular. Uh, I'm going to just build a deck that has a massive win rate against that uh, and and hedge my bets. Um, going into this format, weirdly enough, I actually don't think that's a good strat, um, particularly because um, with what we're dealing with right now, the Layla Alter package is strangely pretty splashable. Like, a lot of people... Um, are just playing it's the concept of you play like four altar four layla and like two three or four mana transmuter and then like a bunch of black and then like from there you just like then you play the rest of your deck like the other 28 cards of your deck or whatever your main color wants to be which is very similar to what derek did to win to win the event so it'll be interesting to see if that actually pays out because a lot of what i've been hearing from people ex is experimenting with that core concept so maybe um, what we can do now is kind of experiment on the idea of if that's what we're walking into and we as a group were trying to consider the way to punish that, what, what kinds of things would we be looking for in that strategy to figure out how to punish it? So for this deck, I mean, it, it's titular card, the, the altar is an addition. Additions are a very vulnerable card type. So you could uh, be playing kind of what Derek did and play Messenger of the Suns to get through it. Um, there's a green one-drop room that destroys additions that's pretty decent. Um, and then Brunhild, of course, has her one man destroy room in, in her room deck. So if that's the only thing you want to target, then, then you can do that. We kind of run into a very classic Force of Will problem where the best counter to a deck is itself. Uh, you see Derek's deck, the, the Brunel deck that played um, Alters, where you both present the problem and present the solution. This has happened several times in Forcible History, and it, and it might be repeated here. Um, otherwise, the deck doesn't really have a whole lot of other great ways to answer it. Um, you can kind of, you can again play the, play the same kind of strategy yourself. You can be a, a black deck that plays. Um, lots of hand hate to kind of get rid of it. But if that's the case, you probably also want to be playing the altar package. If you're playing the altar package, then you're going to get blown out by a Bruno playing the altar package. And again, it kind of becomes this, this circular thing. But um, the two main ways to attack this strategy are going to be addition hate and hand hate. Is there um, is there a card right now in Force of Will that outside of, I know there's Anubis, um, but is there a card that stops things from hitting Grave? The backside of Grim makes it so cards and graveyards don't have abilities, but I don't think that matters. Sure. Yeah, okay. Um, I feel like there's one other, but I'm blanking on what it is. Then you're looking oh, for like, yeah, I mean, you could, effect. So like if you're talking about um to stop like um power of immortality, you have like evil of mental uprising. The idea is the idea is, yes, Alter is very strong, uh, even just by itself, for the incidental sacking and the utility of being able to grab kind of whatever you want. Oh, Stagehand Doll. Joe, Joe Schilling is telling us Stagehand Doll, which ironically yeah. is in black. Um, <laughs> We're pulling out those left field counter cards. Um, but one of the things that gives the Drex so much strength, honestly, is Layla, um, because it's like doing this combo shenanigans while also... Um, <laughs> while also sure. generating all these stones. So my idea was, you know, if you're looking at what does that deck do, it does a lot of deck graveyard interaction and things like the removal spells of... One of the things the deck has done, and we saw it do several times, um, was uh, the idea of you um, sack your own creature um, if it was going to be killed or even just by itself um, to put a counter on it. Uh, and to be able to turn on your own life severing blade uh, and life sever for just one uh, and life severing blade specifically does say a resonator you control has to hit graveyard. So my question was like, is there a way to stop cards from getting to graveyard? But this format is very much unexplored, and I don't know how many cards outside of Anubis exist to do that. So this may be like arguing some. Yeah, I'm not thing, really thinking there was a whole lot. One thing I would. The other thing is that stone ramp in general is just a traditionally very difficult to interact with strategy. 
Yep. Um, so, uh, that's why I would actually say we probably shouldn't call this a combo deck. Like people are talking sure. about the combination of these cards, but this it's is not, a ramp deck. Yeah, like, I agree. Is, I agree with you this wholeheartedly. This is a deck that wants to get to its four drops and five drops at the time frame where you're doing your three drops and simply go, ha, too big to stop. And in traditionally speaking, that's a deck that just like, and maybe like we just don't know the correct deck to beat at the moment. And this one, like some of its threats are pretty sticky which is naturally the foil of control decks. But normally to beat a ramp deck, you just, you play a control deck. They're, a lot of their early stuff is sort of treading water to get yourself, to get themselves set up to do big stuff fast. But then if you're, if that's just slow enough that you're naturally going, oh, counterspell at the point where they're casting their big five drop, they're still way down on tempo. Sure. Um, and so like, I mean, we see a couple Chimimis in the top, and I would I have to double check these exact lists, but I'm betting they were doing well because they were presenting a threat and then like lore writing the key, go search for something, or basically lore writing just enough to maybe not. I know that there he is. Let's say lore writing just enough to where they their opponent doesn't get to go that extra turn early and then just smush them before they get to recover from that. This is the part of the reason I really think the Brunel deck was the best version of this deck. Is a you both get the the ramp combo side of it, but you also get Brunhild's incredible sticky late game, yep. like where she starts looping missile time. And, um... Oh yeah, for sure. I definitely agree. In fact, um, one of the things that we even looked for uh, myself, um, and and I arguably didn't do the testing. I just did the discussion with the people who did the testing. Um, is uh, for those of you who watched the channel a few weeks ago, um, we put up Brandon's uh, ISIS control list. Uh, and Brandon and I had talked about, after looking at this Layla stuff, and Ryan and I talked about it too, about, huh, maybe this Isis deck kind of has something to do with it. In fact, it was like never taking damage because you're just constantly wiping boards and, and that kind of stuff. Um, and that was the practical application. Uh, and against, while I didn't test it against, while we didn't actually get tested against the black, ver like the um, the pure black version of the deck, which is what Brandon and I had talked about it probably having a, a decent matchup against not necessarily the hard stone destruction version that Brandon's playing, but um, the version kind of like similar to what we saw at the event, the white black version, because of Brunhild's sticky late game, that was what kept it from being able to com to keep up. So I definitely think that you're right. Yeah, we could see the ISIS deck be okay. The problem with ISIS is it'll just never beat Kyrick and, and that deck is, is always going to exist to punish those decks. So Probably not really on the table, sadly. A lot of people, I'm going to go to the chat real quick. So um, people talking about um, meta decks currently being Layla Alter decks, Ayu, Chamimi, Kinda Machines, Kirik. Joey thinks that Gil might still be there. Um, Frank, you responded, just forgot him this weekend. Um, no, I said, I, I think that is, I mean, it's possible people just like forgot Gil or were like, oh, maybe we're free of Gil this weekend. But like, just like looking at what the, what Gil is doing versus what this deck is doing, um, I don't inherently think that like the previous incarnation of Gil is just like ready to go. It's sure. like kind of, on, kind of light on counter, like it has the lore rights to interact with some of this, but it's kind of light on counter spells. And so... It's sort of still playing, it's almost still playing the same game. Like it's trying to draw a bunch of cards and ramp, um, and then just beat you with this unstoppable late game, except for one of their, I mean, like, and so then it becomes a matter of how do they, ma like, basically, how does the tempo of the two decks match up? Because Gil has cheap answers to some of the late game, but also he also wants a certain amount of stones to get going. And once they flip, they really, you know, they, they have some, they basically, they don't want to. They want to flip and then keep calling stones, but if you're pressuring their ability to get those stones, his card advantage starts to become less impressive. Um, he might just still be too good, but the I mean, to be honest with you, the fact that Aaron Miles didn't just play him that weekend tells me that like there's at least some chance that he's like the current builds of Gil have a just structural flaw against this deck. Yeah. So part of the thing with Gil is that the best part about that deck was that the fact was it was one of the only mana ramp decks um, that existed, and it's why it fell out of the format um, once Ryan like showed TSW because TSW ramped, but then also did more. Like it was just better, yeah, right, right. and then it also was just better than Gil as like a control deck effectively. Yeah. Um, so like when Gil came back again in these most recent formats, there were no mana ramp decks. 
Drakeskill was the only deck that was doing any mana ramp of like any form, either through absolute awareness or through like through his ability. Um, and like that was what allowed him to push him over because a lot of his spells are just so mana intensive. And like when your opponent's trying to play like super expensive cards, like five drops, four drops, et cetera, et cetera, then you can keep up with them because you have like an extended or like a not an extended, uh, a sped up like curve effectively. Yeah. Um, and but because all these decks have the Lila Alter package, even if you have, for example, um, like the Lorite for the power of immortality, you have the Lorite for the Alter, you have the Lorite for like all these effects, you don't have, um, like you don't have enough to counter everything that they're doing because while you may have the mana for like a lorite or two lorites or whatever you need you don't have the mana to then counter them playing a four drop or a five drop or whatever you may need because they're accelerating too um too fast for you to keep up yep i think about the relationship between like people playing spells and a deck that wants to play counter spells like the, the most recent versions of Gil weren't even playing that many but you think about like um, fifth element is sort of being like a creature counter spell a little bit, like it gets rid of it. But like you, you always need to stay up on mana for uh, the cost of their creature times the number of creatures they can play times the cost of your answers for those creatures. So when you when you're playing this counter spell deck that needs to be putting out buildings, playing fifth elements, playing vanishes, playing all this stuff. You need to be able to answer everything your opponent is doing, and when they're ramping and putting out, you know, X more threats or X threats that are harder for your fifth element to deal with, then then this uh, ramp control deck like, is just always going to fall behind. Yep. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. I will say that, um, weirdly enough, in watching the Minneapolis, uh, not the Minneapolis, the the Bethlehem stream, even seeing the altar decks. The weirdness actually was, um, even in some of the matchups, how close some of the games ended up being, for sure, um, definitely can attest that sometimes the altar decks won um, because their opponent just like wasn't thinking through all the lines that altar opens up. I think um, Joey himself said in his interview when he was playing um, post that uh, he had made a misplay in thinking about what the altar could get and it ended up, like, costing him that game. So, weirdly enough, I mean, obviously we'll have to see, um, because I don't think... Uh, Joey, you're in the chat, so you can tell me if you've actually played against the Brunhild variant. Um, but weirdly enough, yes, the Brunhild deck is very strong, but as this format continues to expand, I would want to see continually how close those games continue to be um, to see whether, like, until we can actually truly judge the strength of, of this deck. Um, this concept so it'll be interesting to see but i definitely think that people should continue to explore um the deck and really ultimately uh the times that the deck seem to struggle is if you can find the proper ways to um alter is the card to punish like layla is good don't get me wrong but layla is made particularly incredibly much better um, by the use of alter. So a lot of the things that I saw people do was um, force their opponents into a position where if they played alter in response to the altar, they'd kill Layla. Or if they, they played Layla in response to the Layla, they'd find a way to destroy the altar. Like, that interaction seems to be the kind of weak point of the deck. Um, so as people are looking to try to punish it, that's where I'd start um, well personally. Yeah. Well, this also comes back to something Brandon mentioned when we were talking about predictions going into it. And like part of the reason he was initially like shaky on the card altar is that on its face, you basically have eight ramp cards in the deck. But if your deck isn't like if your deck isn't functioning correctly, then you have basically eight land draws in a game that doesn't have like drawing lands to hand. So if you can attack altar in such a way where they don't get to convert half of those cards into some other card with actual value in your deck, you give them the ability to just draw air. Right. Which yeah. is like a pretty big failing point. Yeah, the deck is very reliant on the Layla. Like, I stand by what I said last week where I don't actually think the Alter card itself is very powerful, but I do understand that it is in a very powerful shell where it gets to enable these loops with Layla and... Um, bringing the Layla back, sacking and finding either, you know, 
the, and it also synergizes well with like when you're playing these layout the decks, you want to be able to be playing Athenas and late drops to go with your ramp, and then the altar can also find those and synergize as well, so it becomes this machine. But I don't actually think attacking the altar is how you beat this deck. Yeah, for sure. Um, the other thing to keep in mind as you're trying to like as you're trying to beat this deck is sort of keep an eye out or keep in keep an eye on what are other people trying to do to beat it? Because like uh, like we sort of touched on this earlier, but a common pitfall is you'll you'll come across some deck where all of your testing shows it's just it's got a decent matchup here, but then you get to the actual field and realize that people uh, everyone reacted differently to trying to beat it, and yours loses like. An easy example would be if you are some sort of, you know, combo deck, like you're, oh, well, it doesn't matter if they can get all these stones if they never get to untap them, and somehow you manage to work Mosasaurus back into things. But then there's just Lorites everywhere, and you suddenly have these five mana dead cards. Like, don't, like, it's important to keep an eye out for not getting got by the other things trying to beat this deck. Basically, you don't want to, act, like, somehow beat it, but have the same weaknesses, because then you're just playing this deck, but possibly a worse version. Mm -hmm. So I think, yeah. personally, and I haven't really been looking much at Force of Will recently, hashtag Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, um, shameless plug. Uh, um, so, uh, so, like, um, with, like, the Alter Lila combo, um, one of the best parts about Alter is how diverse it is, because it doesn't say Darkness Resonator on it, right? You can get yeah, anything. Alter can grab anything, yeah. Yeah. So part of the part of the like best part about Alter is how like splashable it makes your deck in terms of like what you're trying to do. Because yeah. like if you want to, you can make some you can make blue you can make black X. Like you can make blacks any color deck. Yeah. Um right, exactly. And especially with just transmuter. Do whatever. Yeah, and Transmuter also adds to like the mana consistency for the most part. So like for example, I know Steven Holscheiser did this in his list. He played a one of Lorite. And so what that allows you to do, especially if you're up on alters, is you can alter into Lorite to stop your opponent's alter. Or mm -hmm. get something for Athenia if they get that out early or whatever. Yeah, um yeah. but so it it just opens up Dive like so much diversity in the options that you can have um, that like you can build your deck in such a way that there are just so many counters to like so many different things. Like yeah, you have, yeah, yeah, you can sure. get, you can get combo extenders through like Alcide. You can get um, like counters through either um, like Lorite or whatever. And the fact that it's instant, it lets you do like instant. Um, Athenias against certain decks to force them to like sack something, um, like so on and so forth. So, Travis, think... this is quickly, sorry, real quick. Travis, is there a card I can sack to alter and draw a card? I know that there are cards in the format that when they die, you draw a card. Um, so, those would be the things that you would do. But, sorry, go ahead, Charlie. Um, no, that, was, that was pretty much like kind of the end of it. And, like, Andrew said it um, a little bit further up, but if you play like a deck like Hanzo, Hanzo opens up again Sealing Scroll, which decks are moving to their rune deck in terms of like consistent use of combo. It's kind of weird to say that in like a mana based game, <laughs> um, but um, so like they're moving to that, which you have access to Sealing Scroll to counter your opponent's um, combo extenders, and then you also have access to more Lorites, which are going to counter your opponent's altars or their Lilas or their Athenias. And the decks, all the decks are kind of functioning on this more effect-oriented strategy, which yeah, sure. uh, makes those kinds of counterplays um, like a lot better. It's interesting enough that like um, it's a, we've we've had a couple of formats like this in Forcible's history um, where we had like a true staple shell that just got fitted into a bunch of different things. But like I mentioned it earlier, th this. This definitely feels like we're entering an era, or at least a format, at least for now, um, where it's kind of going to be like 11 card shell, uh, playlist alters and mana transmuters, and then like the rest, the, the other 28, 29 are where you get to like play around. Now, I will say that that's what it looks like right now, but hearkening back to what I said before, is there were quite a lot of games against alter decks that were just like really close. Um, so I'm not saying 
only focus on Alter right now. Um, but to go back to our conversation and your testing and stuff like that, it, it is kind of the current identified boogeyman. So just yeah. take the lessons we've talked about before in terms of when you realize there are boogeyman of the format with what you should play and kind of take that into account. Oh, and this this one's for my own list of personal, like this has happened to me and I fall into this trap in the past. Keep an eye on what the boogeyman is actually doing. Do not get pigeonholed into, for example, don't take Derek's list from last week and go, okay, build a deck to beat this and just keep testing versus that. Because then by the time he or someone else is coming at you at the next event, they've also been working on this list. And theirs is going to be like tuned up and better than this one. Um, For sure. This was a day. Remember, this was a day zero event. Yep. Like um, the cards had come out that day. Um, another important thing I don't know that we've mentioned yet. Um, part of the reason this deck is going to be powerful is like, so we're talking about this as a ramp deck and stuff. We're all like, like for the first time, probably since we rotated into Val or we went into Valhalla, we're talking about two color decks like they're just a thing. So, yep. like, this is just a deck that gets to casually be a two color deck, and no one is scared that they're going to get color screwed. Or at least I've not heard anyone scared well, that playing the altar deck; they're going to get color screwed. So, so part of my thing with like the um, color situation is a lot of. Uh, and this this goes back to Jeremy being like the main core of the deck is Lila, Alter, and X amount of mana transmuter. So I don't think you're allowed to have like your deck be like that. I think it's very much a situation of like your deck is main color black and then you have X splash in a separate yeah. color. Because sure, even yeah. though they accelerate a black like engine or a darkness engine, um, they you need the darkness early to accelerate that engine. Yeah. Um so I think going like going forward, if we're specifically looking at alter decks, then all the alter decks in the future are going to be black splash are, X. Yeah, black splash yeah. X. And it's Agreed. what is the best X splash. So Derek went for more value and um counterplay. Board control, yeah. Yeah. Board control counterplay and more value overall through that. Um maybe in the future it'll turn into um something like I, like you could do counterplay to that like if you're playing a deck that has like no creatures then a value board control like plan isn't going to work out that well for you yeah or you could get you could try and hit them like on a tempo axis like i threw it out kind of jokingly earlier but if you can make a black blue deck work all of a sudden you get to be a ramp deck that gets to throw out early big fat dinosaurs and you get to go back to skipping people's turns again Keep in mind that Layla only ramps black stones. Yeah. So like okay. um you really if you're gonna splash another color, it has to be your off color. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, because like other other cool things you can do with these cards. Like if you're looking into like blue, you could run Loki and you do crazy plays with like the return because that only needs a magic stone. Um doesn't like, care what color. Yeah, it doesn't care what color. It just has like a number cap. If you're going into green, you have cards like Algernon, which again, it only needs a like cap. There is no color specification. Yep. Uh, so it just has. There are so many cards that like synchronize well with just accelerated mana, regardless of the color. And there are some that just need a singular um, like point of that color in order to, to work, do work, what yeah, they're trying yeah. to do. Yes, cards with mana costs combo with ramp spells. Yes. <laughs> Brandon, listen here. We don't need your sass. Don't don't make me. Who do you think you are? There. Who do you think you are? Aaron Miles from two weeks ago. Who do I think I am? So I do want to talk. I, I think um, we'll go ahead and um, we'll see that there's questions in the chat as, as people come in to kind of talk about it for sure. If we want to talk about this idea of of specifically, you know, punishing, we've kind of really focused it in on the altar style and kind of what it looks like. Um, yeah. I do, however, want to talk a little bit about. Um, so the set's been out at this point now two weeks, right? Week and a half? Something like that. Yeah. Um, and I will yeah. say that I was talking with some people the other day, and there's actually a lot of fun stuff in this. Um, and I say that specifically because we're going into uh, a time period where the next major event isn't until August, <laughs> at least in the United States. Um, so I'm interested to see... 
it, Charlie's been focusing a lot on Yu-Gi-Oh, but Frank and I talk about Force Will a bunch, and Brandon, you yep. at least I assume look at cards. Um, I do. <laughs> uh, so, is there anything in this set that you have been um, enjoying or kind of toying around with just for like fun? Our, oh, we're doing it just for fun decks. Uh, yeah. Blue, blue, red, go greed. Okay. You just play, so you just play because now you have the Loki Master Rune and the Mystery Box, and so you just, uh, so you just play a bunch of blue and red cards that like, um, and you have the Awakening cards, so you just go, oh, your goal is to basically go, oh, well, here's my Awakening Dinosaur, and then untap Loki's Master Rune, untap Mystery Box, and just go, eh, the life will find a way. <laughs> it's like, like funny away. It's just life a finds a way. Landing on them. Life finds a way. Um, yeah. it, it was something I played with. It was goofy and fun last set, and that was before they gave us the Loki's Master Room to actually just like make it, like give it that in between step so it never, it hits a point where it just never stops casting big dumb stuff. Sure. Um, one of the things that I'm playing right now, and I'm actually going to be recording it for the channel next week, is it was sent to me by Min Ha, and it's absolutely just Adam Roulette. Like it's just Adam's slot machine, uh, oh. and it and it pretty much just needs one card in its opener for me to like just put money in the machine and see what happens. You can just play Treasure Tree into Adam's Master Rune turn two, and you just see what you hit. And we're just playing a, <laughs> and we're just playing a bunch of really big stuff. Like the deck is playing uh, Ushuha, Ares, Anubis, Mosasaurus, uh, Mistletane. Um, Ultra Dragon, like just all of this shenanigans, high level, but split the cost all over the place, and it's just let's let's if if Treasure Tree sticks turn two, let's pull the lever and let's see what we hit. Um, and uh, so far, my best one has been uh, turn two, Ushua Anubis Ares off the top. Ushua triggers, goes gets me a Misty, uh, and then I get to play another Treasure Tree and a Brunhild Shield off of the Ares Will Production. So, just sitting on that turn, too. <laughs> Thank you, uh, I, uh... I keep up with Epic Stories. The only yeah. real force of Will format. <laughs> the only real uh, force of Will format. Hard to um, <laughs> This is quite a group for that. Format. Uh... And so I've been playing, like, Athenia Loki. Or I've been trying to make it work. Oh, interesting. It's getting there. It's still just a law of silence loop deck at its heart, but <laughs> there you go. Um, in terms of like new frontiers, uh, I don't really play at my local store anymore because I killed it twice. Um, but I really like that. I really like heroic epic just like as a card because I love Grishel Brand in Modern Magic. If any of you have ever played Modern. <laughs> Um, I have, <laughs> and so like I just I love heroic epic into Ushua into some other big thing, and then you just like keep doing that the rest of your game. Unfortunately, I think the best version of that deck is probably also an altar deck, but but here we are. I mean, it's black red, so so we kind of mentioned it earlier, but my but Isis Control will always be my pet deck. It's terrible. It's never been good, but I I love it, and I love its few matchups that it can win, and I always try to make it a little bit better. Um, the master in the yeah, the master in got in this set is actually be pretty good. Like it, it helped the deck a little bit. Like um, you now have an out to Pia, Pia like because it does yeah because it does a thousand damage. You actually have a card that can kill that now, which helps a teensy tiny bit. Still not enough, but one of the things um, that I've seen actually with that deck, which has been interesting, is um, our, you and I have both played it, but Poison Stinger does a lot of different work and a lot of different points with that deck. But one of yeah. the things I've seen people do is drink upkeep Poison Stinger someone and then Spiral of Chaos and yeah. say, okay, well, it's going to do two grand. Right, that's not like... The, the thing about the Isis deck is you, your opponent could start at 10,000 life and it doesn't make any difference at all. Like, it, like the, the deck does not care about doing damage to your opponent. For sure. But that, that is a cool little interaction that you can have. Um, the other deck that I think is really good is Machines. I saw there was a Loki deck that topped this at, like, bottom yeah, speed or something. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, he um, didn't know, like, he had to leave before they announced top eight, so he didn't find out that he top eighted, and then um, he didn't get told that they were starting earlier and he had like a brain fart moment where he didn't realize he could make it back to the store in time. Um, yeah, well, even, even so, like, I don't... 
I don't actually even think his Loki deck is quite what I would be playing sure. either. But and so like I, I still think that this deck has a lot of room to be powerful in ways that people haven't quite figured out yet. Um, but, uh, I, I just absolutely love machines. I've played so much machines. One of the things that was interesting, and sure, it was a day zero format, so clearly, you know, how much that means for the long, jet, for the long term in terms of what this format actually looks like. Um, but we had uh, six different rulers, um, and only two of the decks were, like, similar, and that was the, the Lucifer altar and the, the uh, Messenger altar, so kind of two variants on the altar deck. But it was six different rulers, um, and only two of them were similar, but they were two different rulers. So I just thought that was interesting. Um, definitely not indicative of the long-term format, but it was just kind of kind of cool to see in a day zero. Yeah, that's neat. If we're listing off things that we're just like looking forward to, but we're willing to admit when we just want to play with some of the busted stuff, I just want to play like uh, two sets ago. I was just messing with a green black Chimimi deck where you're just you're playing a black deck, your hand disruption, kill and stuff, and then your top end was just. Oh, look at these Karuras and Elephants. And now it can just be, well, I've got all this ramp and hand disruption and stuff. And I'm just, oh, look, my top end is Elephants and also Athenias and stuff. And like, that just sounds fun to me. Apologies to people who have to play against me too often. But I just love grinding out mid range matches like nobody's Frank business. loves mid range decks so much. I think every I time know. I've ever played against Frank, it's some form of mid range. Can we throw out like the quick tension of woohoo? I can't I can't wait to actually play with the London Mulligan in a different card game because it helps mid range decks so much. So the one thing I do want to point out is that um regardless and kind of speaking to what the, weirdly enough, this entire week um outside of today, um in terms of content that you'll see here on the channel, um, kind of goes back to what I said before about how the f the next major event, uh there's one in Mexico this month, I believe, and two more in Canada. Um, one more in Canada this month that has a paid invite, and then one more in Canada later. And then there's nationals later this week at AR or later this month at ARG if you're going to it. Um, best of luck to any people who decide to go to that one. Uh, it, I won't be streaming it, so who knows. Um, but um, is that uh, this actually gives us a lot of time to just kind of like goof around. Uh, and so what you're going to see is weirdly this week. So today we had this discussion about things. Tomorrow you're going to have a video that's posting, talking. I talked with um, Leon and Joe, uh, the two of the guys who are working with Ben on Conqueror format. You're going to see us talk about that. Uh, Wednesday's feature match this week is a Conqueror match. Um, Thursday, you're going to have the deck profile probably from this past event. And then Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I'm actually streaming the event that's taking place in Madison, Indiana this weekend. Um, the owner of Dragon's Realm Games down there just said, you know what, I'm going to just a weekend of fun, a weekend of Force of Will. Um, so Friday night, we're playing Lapis Cluster only with Griffin and Hook Band. Uh, so I, for one, I'm like, oh, I just so good to play Fox. I'm super pumped to do that. Um, Saturday, we're playing New Frontiers, and then Sunday, we're playing Wanderer. So uh, be on the lookout for those to be streamed this weekend here on the channel. And I'll put the link to that event here in the chat so that people can go check it out. It's going to be a lot of fun, and Dragon's Realm is putting in a lot of work to make it just a, a good experience for everybody who comes down. That's awesome. I'm excited to see what people, what, how people decide to approach New Frontiers. Uh, my hope is that people just like take the fact that it's not like it's not a GP as as an excuse to just like play fun things. So hope hopefully that happens. Mm -hmm. Well, it's fun when you can win. Well, you can win while having fun. Yeah. Can I mean, you? Joey, you're mm -hmm. or, sorry, Charlie, are you trying to tell me you didn't have fun playing Gil? Uh, I had fun because everyone thought I was insane because I was like the only person in the room on that. There you go. See, you had fun and you played a deck and you won. So there you go. You did well. There you go. Anybody who's close to Madison, Indiana should definitely consider coming out to that event. It's going to be a lot of fun. So, and if not, you should definitely watch the stream. Let's see. I'm trying to look through the chat here. Toby Gaffney. Everyone thought the tree was going to be broken. Who would have figured that black would get broke? I mean, when tree first was spoiled, I didn't realize. I, I didn't really think that it was going to be insane. Um, but they, that is. I mean, that's the forceful community in a nutshell, right? They see one thing and then bleh, they freak out. Um, 
One also like tree. We had like we knew tree like a month in advance of any other single card. So there was a lot of time for people to be like, this is the only card to freak out about. Yep. Um, Rogue's Guild will be at Nats. Two of us will be at the Canadian GP that weekend. Um, let's see. <laughs> Winning equals fun. Relatable. Winning is proving the fruits of your labor from testing. That sounds like a Joey thing to say. <laughs> oh, so I'll see, I'm the opposite. Uh, I have, uh, go ahead. I have more fun the less testing I do. <laughs> If you guys were to play in a lapis cluster only, no hook, no griffin format, what would you play? Lapis cluster? Lapis cluster. Mm. A no hook, no griffin. No hook, no griffin. Lapis Prisia. cluster. Prisia? So you don't get Levitine and you don't get the dual stone. Like, when you get her dual stone, but you don't get blasting waves. Blasting waves, lapis cluster. Yeah, yeah was, that was, was right. We had it last set. Um, I'm, until rotation. I'm fucking boosted. Yeah, Prissy is the only deck. Interesting. So Prissy with sprinting flame horse. Yeah. Yep. Okay. You get Sylvia still, right? Yeah. Yep. You get several. Yeah, you, you get literally the whole deck that was at Worlds, and then you're playing against Fox, which has no Griffin. So Wait, is there there's no bands except for Griffin and Griffin and Hook. Hook. So you still get other world dreams then? No, other that's world not in Lapis was, Cluster. No, Lapis Cluster. Neither was Fair Spell. Oh okay. See I just I don't know my sets at all. So you get for Fox, the only card the Fox Dex loses is uh is actually just Griffin. Um the whole deck is still there. Um and then Prissia loses Leviton. And oh. Uh, it's cheaper cancel stuff. So Fox will have the to like broken stuff that Fox has. All the green decks, uh, all the non-green decks even get severing wins. Right. Um, Fox will get planting means demonic dead. Yep. Um, Prissia will have Jack Giant. The, Giant. So she'll have Jack Giant, but she also has the myths, not including Izanagi. Not including Izanagi. But Izanagi was the kind of best myth. She gets the spinning the frig forever. Yeah. Um, um, Seal of Wind Seal and Light is not in that format. Um, But you get the horse, so you still have a way to give her... Horse. Yeah, she, yeah. Just can't o she just can't OTK you. Uh, uh, so you, have, you have rapid growth. She can totally OTK if you... You don't have enough will to do it in one turn. You, or, or, sorry, you can't. Sorry, you can do it, but you can't do it turn two. She has so Marie. Like Jack Giant things. So like when you yeah. when you have Jack, when you have Gods are Prisia, the Jack and the Giant both have switches and flying. So. Yeah. Um. You have Maria Bella, and you still have Sacred Elf. Oh, Maria Bella! I fucking forgot about that lady. Yeah. Okay. This is the best deck. I'll be interested to see. I myself am playing Fox, but I can't resist an opportunity to play Fox. You get Maria Bella, you get the the Sylvia, the two drop. Yeah, you get a lot of good nonsense. You can play a Miracle Millennium Medicine um, Tree 2 deck if you really... That's true, yeah. you can play that. Yeah. Hyperion, but... uh, Hyperion, the Lapis Cluster only event is just Friday night. Um, so if you want to come down and just hang out with us on Friday night, you know, play New Frontiers on Saturday, you should do that. The Lapis Cluster event is is just... It's the most casual of the three events. Uh, it starts Friday night. It does, I didn't, it's going to be real chill. So, There's no Black Moonbeam, right? That's not no Black Moonbeam, no. Nope. Okay, well, there goes my hopes of playing Alhamid. All right. I'm excited. It'll be fun. I'm going to bring down my Killing Stone and my little Messenger of Lilius Battle and just, like, fox it out the whole time. <laughs> uh, so, I think... Do we have anything else that we want to talk about in terms of this idea of punish? Not really. So I'm looking at the chat to see if anyone else is kind of thinking of anything or having any other questions. Oh, I will say this. And I will say this not for the sake of discussion, um, but I'm just going to... I've done a little digging, and so we'll have to see. Um, uh, so I guess maybe we can use the, the last 10 minutes to really discuss it, although I've been talking about it all day. Big mood. Um, so, mm -hmm. New Valhalla 4 was announced um, 
like two days ago, uh, and or late earlier today, and then also the same day we received the IVC2 um, sheet or whatever, a distributor pushed that out. On the IVC2 sheet, it talked about it being a 100-card set with 20 super rares, 20 rares, um, 25 uncommons, and 35 commons. Uh, and then a line on the IVC2 list said, commons and uncommons are V0 reprints. Um, and so what people are concerned about is that the uh, how we haven't gotten starter deck reprints, but instead now we're just getting those same uh, the reprints of the cards in a set. So it's like, oh, well, why would I even buy this set? It's going to make a lot of, bunch of stuff weird. That's not what I'm here to talk about. What I am here to talk about is I have done a little digging, and hopefully we get something official from the company themselves. I have made it very clear to Kim... Uh, and other people within the company that they need to actually talk to the community about the fact that this is a, a, uh, something they're concerned about. Um, Kim has told me that that statement is not completely accurate, um, that commons and, com and uncommons are not 100% reprints. So take it take it as is we'll have to wait to hear actually an official announcement from the company i have told them that they need to make that official announcement but the message that i received from kim is that not all of the commons and uncommons are reprints there are new cards in the common and reprint slots so like the, the funniest part about this whole discussion is not only do you need like to, are you, when you open your boxes, are you basically not getting very many new cards because of the reprint policy? You actually need more boxes of this set than you previously needed to complete your play sets. Because this set has 20 super rares, where in every one of the last three sets has only 10. So to complete your play sets of super rares, um, you need unless whatever... They change you... the, unless they change the pull rate for super rares, as they've done in the past. Sure, that, that's definitely possible. But if the pull rate on super rares remains the same... You know, percentage of packs, sure. and then you need twice as many as you needed last time to complete super rare play sets, which is kind of, you know, so, Hyperion, we funny given that we don't really, there's a lot we don't know. Uh, and so, like, I'm not going to get into a ton of speculation. I'm not going to do a bunch of stuff like that. All I wanted to, ref to pass on is from what I have heard is that not all of the commons and uncommons are reprints, that there will be new cards in the common and uncommon slots. I will work to try to find more information as I find it, um, but, and I have again told the company that they need to be very quick, and Kim has said they plan on making an announcement, but Kim has said that before in the past, so again, just passing on what I know with the grain of salt attached to it, so. Just wanted to share that. All in all, I think that if that is truly the case, hold on, I got a message right here. Let's see, not from him. Um, if that is truly the case, and that not all of the set is reprints of structures, if it's more something like um, what we saw in Raya set one, where some of the cards from the structures got reprinted, but then there were new cards in those slots, um, I think it would be a similar kind of reaction, where it's like, yeah, okay, I guess. Um, we could have not done that and been fine. Um, I think right now the main concern is just what the ratio of commons to uncommons are going to be um, in terms of new versus old. Um, but it also could be potentially a good thing. At least the grain of salt silver lining of it is that there have been players who've been wanting to get their hands on starter deck cards, and this is a way for them to at least to do so. However, long-term players, that doesn't work out so well for them, but we can go into the dig in and dig in and dig in. Um, we'll just have to see. Wait and find out. But I just is there, what I've learned. Is there a player is there a player that wants the like starter deck going card that doesn't have a blue ruler? Like probably not, right? Like a lot of the starter deck cards probably want the ruler that comes with them. Right. And that's what the, a lot of the a lot of the weirdness right now is even the math doesn't check out. Um, because like if you imagine sixty so each of the ten starter decks or each of the five starter decks had ten main deck cards at play sets, uh, and then the runes on top of it. But if you're trying to tell me that sixty cards are reprints, then even if we reprinted all ten of every one of the five, we only get fifty, and then it becomes okay, well what are those other ten cards? Is it gonna be runes? Is it gonna be um master runes is it going to be rulers and then you get the idea of well okay let's talk about it if they're not changing rarities and they only do six uh, each set only had six uh, commons and two uncommons so then you get 30 commons and 10 uncommons so then you have 
10 uncommon slots and five common slots that are brand new. And so what fills those slots? And blah, blah, blah. there's a lot of weird math that comes along and I'm not going to dig into the heart of that, but I just want to let people know that I am still trying to find out more. Um, but from what I have been told right now, they are not 100% reprints. So we'll just have to wait and see. So. All right, cool. So, however, that it will do it for us tonight. I'm looking in the chat here really quick. Um, let's see. Yeah, we'll have to see kind of what happens. I'm not really seeing anything else in the chat. But again, please check out. I'll post it one more time. If you're anywhere near Madison, Indiana this weekend, Dragons of Realms uh, weekend of Force of Will, please go check it out. We're going to be there having a lot of fun. Um, but as always, you can go ahead and support what we do here um, by checking out the links down below or considering hitting that join button. It goes to support the channel and what we do, better equipment, more consistent content, improving quality, all kinds of stuff. So we always appreciate it. Uh, you can also get your stuff featured here on the channel as a part of that. So always a, always a support but until next time this has been myself jeremy franklin and i have been joined by brandon bremont frank clauser and our guest tonight charlie demuel hello and we will see you all next week so until then class dismissed